What's up guys, Rob Sambles here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about my remote camera behind the backboard for basketball. Gonna show you all how it works, gonna show you how I set it up. First things first, this beard is itching the head out of me. I had it for weeks, I need to get rid of it. So, oh, there we go, just like that. That feels a hell of a lot better. Okay guys, got rid of it, I needed to. At least now Mrs. Samples is gonna be happy. Are you happy? Yeah. She's happy. Uh, so today we're gonna to be talking about my backboard camera, my behind the backboard camera, the one that looks through the glass. I've only really tried it a few times. You guys might have seen my uh, photos on Instagram. If you haven't seen those, you're obviously not following me on Instagram. You gotta go check those out guys. I'm gonna put my Instagram feed on the screen right now. There's three of them. The middle one is the one that I'm just referencing about the basketball. That's my Scorchers Instagram channel. There's loads of basketball shots on that. The top one is my main channel and the bottom one is a sports specific Rob Samble sports channel. Go check that out. Loads of sports photos guys. Loads of stuff. If you're not following me on Instagram, you're missing out. If you're not on Instagram, you should be guys. That's the main social media for photography. Go on Instagram, follow my account, check it out. Loads of content on there. So guys, I've got a problem right now. As you might have gathered, I'm in a hotel room. I'm not at home. I don't even have my remote camera stuff. I need to go get it. So let's get going. What's up guys? So I am back at the house. Now I've filmed some bits in between the bit you just saw and this bit. Namely, I have been um, to a game and I've shot a game and I set up a remote camera behind the backboard and I filmed some of that for you guys. But before I showed you that piece, I wanted to show you this piece because this is going to give you a much better idea of how we set it up. Okay guys, so what I'm going to do is show you how to set up this remote camera right here in the comfort of my home rather than trying to show you and record this section of the video at the court when I'm on some scaffolding or a ladder or somewhere where it's difficult to set this up properly with the microphone and, and the stand and everything because this way I can explain it step by step. So instead of having a basketball backboard, we've got a light stand tripod thing which I've just set up which we're going to pretend is the fixing or the bar behind the backboard that I would would use to connect this to. Uh, we don't have a backboard so we're going to pretend this door is the backboard so this is the glass backboard. This is part of the um, stanchion or the section behind the backboard and we're going to connect the camera to this to look through our backboard. Okay so that's going to be the setup. So first of all what we're going to need. So you're going to need two magic arms. I've got two of them. These are Manfrotto magic arms. You can get cheaper versions. I didn't want to get cheaper versions. Just for me, there was a risk that they wouldn't be able to hold enough weight. So I've got two of the Manfrotto ones. I've got the two different types. I've got one twisty knob tightening one, one lever tightening one. Really just because I did. This one was new. This one was second hand. You can see this one's a lot more beaten up. Um, and I put some tape around it and stuff where the paint had chipped off. But hey, it still works. It's still absolutely good. So you're going to need two of those. I'll explain why you're going to need two in just a minute. And I should also have said one of those magic arms is going to need this section on it, which is the platform that the camera attaches to on one end of the magic arm, this platform right here. You're also going to need some of these. These are super clamps. You are going to need four of these specifically. These super clamps, sorry, four, you're going to need three of these super clamps, guys, that go onto the magic arms, three of those. You're going to need some kind of either safety cable like this, this is my safety cable, or a crack camera strap or something that you could use as a safety cable if you don't have an actual safety cable itself, um, but something else as an extra barrier for safety, which I'm going to show you how that works in just a minute as well. You're going to need some gaffer tape. Anyone who's done a lot of photography work or anything with like lighting or a remote camera or anything knows that gaffer tape is always handy. You're going to need some gaffer tape. And I also have some cable ties just in case um, maybe there isn't somewhere um, that I I feel is secure enough that I can fit my safety cable to, something like that. Sometimes cable ties come in handy, so I always have a couple of cable ties as well. Now perhaps most importantly you're going to need a camera that you can use um, as the remote camera. This is one of my 7D Mark IIs. I've attached my triggers to the top so I put one trigger here in the horseshoe, connected into the shutter release here and I've got the other trigger with me which will be the one I use to fire the camera with. You need a lens. Now normally I would use my 10 to 22 mil and I would use it set at 10 mil for a real wide angle shot. I'm actually using that lens to film this video right now so just for the sake of the demonstration I've stuck my 50 mil um, lens on the front of this camera but I would use something much much wider. I normally would be shooting at 10mm um, when I set up a remote camera behind the backboard. 
Now I should say guys, in my next video, there is actually an opportunity to win a set of these triggers. These are the, um, I don't know how exactly you say it, the, the Yong, Yong Neo um, triggers, the RF603Cs. I've got a competition coming up in my next video where you can win a set of these triggers. Loads of people ask me about triggers, there's loads of interest in them, and I actually have a spare set. They're brand new, never used, um, so I thought I would give them away in the, um, in the, on the channel. So there'll be a competition coming up to win a set of these triggers in my next video. Make sure you check that out. Okay guys, so step one. Step one is going to be to set up my first magic arm. Now my first magic arm, you need the one which has the camera support on one end and one clamp on the other end. Now anyone who's not familiar with these, the great thing is that when you untighten this middle section, everything on this becomes loose. So the middle joint moves, the end joints move as well, this end joint moves too, the whole thing kind of almost becomes like floppy and bendy. And as soon as you tighten this, everything locks still where it was. So it's really, really handy. You can set it at any kind of angle you want. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to set this one up here. I'm gonna make it loose to start with when I fit it on. I'm gonna set this first one a little bit lower down, guys. The reason I'm gonna do that is because I want my first arm to be almost positioned in like a V shape. What I don't want is it to be extended on like a full extension on the arm. I'll show you what I mean by that. Once it's on, I don't want this to be straight out here because it's just bearing much more weight than it needs to. I'm going to have it kind of set like a V shape like this, which you guys I think can see. Yeah, you can see there now. So just for a second, I'm just going to tighten this whilst I make sure it's in the right kind of roughly the right spot for me for a second. When that's tight, I'm just going to make sure my clamp is tight. No risk at all with my clamp. That's not going anywhere. Next thing is to attach my camera to this section here. Okay guys, so this is really simple, this section. Just like you would a tripod or something, you're gonna attach your camera onto this section of the strap, onto this section of the um, arm. You tighten that up. You wanna make sure it's nice and tight again. With this kind of thing, you wanna make sure everything is nice and tight. So make sure that's on there nicely, it is. Cool. So that's on there, we've got one clamp on, one clamp on here. Now a lot of people would say, well surely that's all you need. But the idea of this is safety, okay? So you're gonna see I'm gonna add another two safety barriers in between the risk of this camera falling down. Anyone who's familiar with the basketball setup, this section behind the backboard will actually be over the playing surface because the backboard is positioned onto the playing surface a bit and the baseline is behind. So if this fell, there's a risk that this would actually fall on players. Um, and obviously that's a risk. Look, forget damaging the camera gear, you can seriously hurt someone. So safety precautions are the most important thing with this. On that note, guys, I should probably give a bit of a disclaimer and say it's really, really important that you don't ever do this unless you've ticked a few important boxes first. Number one is make sure you have insurance for yourself. So I have public liability insurance um, to make sure I'm covered for all things photography. I would never photograph basketball like sitting on a baseline or set up something like this or even really on the end of a football pitch without insurance just to be safe, just in case I managed to damage somebody or someone was to fall on me and hurt themselves on my gear, something like that. Maybe it sounds a bit far-fetched, but it's about covering yourself so insurance really really important second of all get permission so make sure that the league in the game that you're doing this with is happy for you to do it and that the officials in the game are happy as well. Um, in my case also, because I work for one club, I've made sure the club are happy and the team are happy and they know what, um, what I'm doing with it and they're okay with it. And last but not least, make sure you've insured your gear because you never know, there is still a possibility that this could fall. Yeah, you could hurt someone, all that stuff, you've got to make sure is covered with your safety precautions and your insurance. But even at the end of all that, you don't want to have to pay out for new gear. So make sure you've got your gear insured i have everything of mine insured my cameras my lenses everything really really important that you guys get that before you start doing anything like this anyway guys that's the end of the public service announcement let's get back on with doing this so next step is going to be to make sure we set this up so it's looking where we want it to look now there's lots of different ways you can do this you can set it up a bit lower so it kind of looks out across the top of the rim or if you think you're going to have a slightly um, lower level played game I don't mean in terms of the standard I mean in terms of the height of the game NBA for example loads of it's above the rim players are like up here dunking like with the rim here some of the other leagues the BBL for example tends to be slightly further down slightly more below the rim so I actually tend to set this up a little bit higher looking down past the rim um, I'll show you what I mean with my exact setup I'll tell you what actually I'll put a, um, a shot taken with this remote camera into the video right now There you go guys, so you see what I mean? It's quite a high view, it's kind of looking down um, a bit more across the basket. So I'm gonna set that up right now. So we're gonna loosen this. When you loosen this, make sure you've got a grip on your camera because as soon as you loosen this, this entire arm will go floppy. 
and I'm going to set it up where I want it. I want it to be up a bit higher and I want it to be kind of looking down through the backboard like this. And I'm going to retighten it again, okay? Now, something that's a bit easier, when you start getting your camera at this kind of angle, it's quite difficult to look through and see where you're at. So if you guys have got live view, or live view on your camera, which I imagine you would, put it on live view and you can see what your screen's looking at. You can see what your camera's looking at on the screen right here. We've not done the focusing piece yet. We're going to do that in a minute. Um, but just to get your, your field of view, you can use live view on the back of the camera. But before we start worrying about focus, we need to make sure this is safe, like I talked about before. Now for this section you're going to need your other arm and on this arm you're going to want to clamp on both ends. Um, just to show you guys, these are real simple these clamps, they have a button on the side, you press the button in, you slot that onto the peg there and then you tighten it up at the back and that's your clamp attached on. I've got one of those on both ends. Now this is going to be a safety clamp, so this quite literally is going to be a clamp that supports the first clamp. Just in case for some reason that first clamp failed, I've got some kind of backup. So all I do is I attach this one here onto the, um, onto the bracket or onto the pole in this case, and I'm going to tighten it up. Okay, make sure it's tight, it is. And then this one is going to go onto my first clamp. So just like this, and I'm just going to tighten this on here. So now I have one clamp which holds the camera and I have a second clamp which holds the first clamp just in case there's any kind of failure. Look, it's unlikely, but again, it takes that risk out the way. Really, really important. And I need one more aspect for safety before I start setting up the focus. Okay, and that's my safety cable. Now, for this setup here, because I'm doing this by a door in my house, I actually don't have a bracket above me to set my cable onto. But I'm just going to show you how we do that anyway. I literally, this cable has two, um, this one has like a carabiner this end, this one's got a more permanent loop this end, and I've got a little kind of key ring thing here which I stick on there, I make sure that's tightened up closed, and then I put this onto one of the camera strap sections on here on my camera and then I will run this safety cable up and over a bracket above so it connects on. Now in the next section of the video in a minute you guys are going to see that in a lot more detail on the actual basketball backboard setup. Really really important guys it's just another barrier if all this fails your stuff just going to hang up there on that safety cable. Really really important just another safety precaution that I always use just to be safe. Okay, so next up is focus, guys. You've got to focus the camera to make sure it's focused properly. Now, I will always try to set this up when the basket is actually full height. Now, when I set this up um, day before yesterday, which is in the clips you're going to see in a minute, the basket actually wasn't fully up. It was about half up because they were still doing some work on the shot clock. So I had to get a bit clever. Now, what you need to try to do is pre-focus to roughly where you think you want the focus to be. Now, in my case, when I do this, I want the focus to probably be about kind of a foot, foot and a half below the height of the rim because that's where most of the action is going to take place. If someone's coming in for a big dunk or a big layup, chances are their face or the ball or the bits that you really want in focus are probably going to be about a foot below the rim at that key point. So that's where I pre-focus. You can do that loads of different ways. You could get someone tall to go stand down there. You could get someone to hold something up, which is what I did. I got someone to go down by the basket. They held something up, so it was about a foot below the rim. I focused, so I made sure I'd focused on that thing. And as soon as I was focused, I was happy. I'd got the focus right. I switched my lens to manual focus so I know it isn't going to try to refocus. It's now stuck on that pre-focus that I've done and I'm good to go. One more thing I do just to be safe, that's when my gaffer tape comes in. I get a little piece of gaffer tape and I put this across the focus ring on my lens so there is no risk of that moving during the game. Sometimes the backboard vibrates, there's a lot of shake, it's not going to move, it's not going to throw my focus off. That will then stay consistent for the whole game. Now, the last thing. Now, what I would say, I suppose this next step is um, like an, an extra step. I think it's really important because it massively affects your image quality. Um, it's not necessarily a compulsory thing if it's your first time trying this, but I would still really recommend it, is to set up like a barrier um, to shield reflections. Now, if you're shooting through a glass backboard, You'll shoot through the glass, of course, but what you'll also get is light coming off from this area down here, shining off the backboard and into your camera, which means it affects your stuff. If you've got lines or something down here on the court, you'll get a reflection of lines across your image, and it almost looks like a bit like a double exposure effect. So I set up a quick shield, which I'll show you right now. 
Now you can use whatever you want for this, guys. You can use some black paper, which is kind of what I've done. I've got this big triangle of black paper with some gaffer tape around the edges. You could use some black plastic, um, a black bag, kind of cut into the right kind of size, some material, something like that, whatever you want. But literally, a big old triangle, kind of like this. This is what you guys need. Big old triangle like this. And you're going to attach this underneath the camera. So again, the gaffer tape comes in handy. You're going to come in under here, underneath your camera. You get your gaffer tape out and you're going to tape that onto the bottom of your camera like this. Now you need some more gaffer tape because you're going to have to get the bottom piece and you're actually going to tape this on to the back of the backboard. Now what I would say, just make sure when you do this that you haven't got this pit appearing into the edges of your frame. If you're shooting at 10 mil or something really wide, obviously it has a real wide field of view. So sometimes if you put this a bit too close, you're gonna start capturing this in the bottom of your image. So you need to be careful to make sure that you haven't got it creeping into the corners of your picture. Make sure it's low enough. Uh, normally when I do this, I would take all this along so I would seal this all the way along the edge, but this is my door, I don't wanna risk like, taking some of the um, kind of wood effect off it or something. The missus would kill me, I don't want to do that. Um, but you get the idea how that piece would work. Now, last but not least, before you climb down, because uh, chances are, once you've set this up and you climb down, you move your ladder or whatever it was you were using away, you're probably not going to be able to get to this to the end of the game. Maybe a half time if you're lucky, you might be able to switch your memory card, something like that. So really, really important, just check the essential things, guys. It sounds stupid, but check it's turned on. Yeah, check your camera's turned on. Check your, um, your triggers are turned on, really, really important. Check there's a memory card in here. Check the battery's full. Check those kind of important things, because maybe you guys probably realistically like like I set this up about two, even three hours before the game. So I need to make sure I've got full batteries and everything. So it needs to last about five hours, five and a half hours even until the end of the game. So I make sure everything's fully charged, everything's turned on, we're all good. That's the full setup, obviously, apart from the safety cable, which would come out the top. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to switch the video over to the game so you guys can see me sitting up for real. Let's go. setup. I've done it now. I couldn't film the entire thing because um, I had to do it quite quick but here's the setup right now. I'm going to show you a bit of a um, clip of how it works. Okay guys so here's the whole setup. You can see I've got it on the backboard there. There's my first clamp which is attached to the camera. My second clamp which is attached to the first clamp which is the one for safety like we talked about. The top left of the camera there you can see I've got the cable running up and attached to the top. Overall, the setup is looking downwards and through past the basket, so I get the angle that I want, pre-focused. If we come round to the side, you can see I've got my reflection guard all set up underneath. Stop the reflections coming off the glass. And that's the whole setup for you guys. 